What is up? Welcome to this week's episode of the Van Flip Podcast, brought to you by none other than Lamb Goat. This week, we have a blast from the past on the podcast. I'm joined by Nick Brooks from the band It Dies Today from Buffalo, New York. Welcome to the show, Nick. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm looking forward to this uh, for, for quite some time now. So, yeah, uh, yeah man, I'm glad we, uh, glad we were able to get this going. Yeah, I want to <laughs> say this original conversation probably started years ago that we've talked, I, we've talked off and on about doing this. I think a safe estimate would be like two to three years ago. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad we able uh, we were able to to get connected here. So was it before any of the kind of like reunion stuff started happening, like talking? Because I know we had talked like around the pandemic or something like that, and then obviously nothing was going on. There were no plans. But, yeah, <laughs> but then all yeah. of a sudden you guys kind of announced the reunion thing with Furnace Fest. So yeah, so I mean we we've, we've stayed in touch and we've been. Uh, the group chat is alive and well uh, for the last couple of years, but there had been no real plans. Um, I think randomly, maybe in like 2022, I reached out to Mike, uh, who plays guitar, and just like wanted to see like, do you want to just write some stuff for fun and like and and just kind of attack it that way uh, without any real expectations or anything like that? And we we had talked about that for a long time, uh, and nothing materialized. And then. Uh, uh furnace fest reached out <clears throat> i want to say like i don't know i don't remember but uh regardless so furnace fest reaches out and uh made us an offer and um uh, we've always wanted to do it i remember like when etid played back i think it was like there's the second year of the fest in like oh one or oh two i don't mm-hmm. remember always wanted to go down there always wanted to be a part of it and then you know obviously they kind of resurrected and then uh so so once that came through, we kind of just we got back together and uh, started rehearsing, and we had a bunch of leftover songs and stuff from like ten years ago <clears throat> that we just never did anything with, and so we've been kind of just working on those and getting the set together for for September, and looking forward to doing that. Yeah, and I mean, you guys have recently posted some some behind the scenes footage of you guys doing some practicing and of the practice space in that area. Uh, so that's been pretty cool to look at. Um, how did like Furnace Fest know to like, they just like on a random whim reached out to you guys or like, were you guys thinking about maybe noodling around the idea of like getting back together? Or was that like a catalyst kind of thing to like push you guys down that rabbit hole more? One billion percent, like just a catalyst. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> like, so we, yeah, we, we've talked about wanting to do it. Obviously um, there's a lot of, um, I don't, I don't want to say like nostalgia bands because there's a lot of great new bands. On Nick, you can say too. nostalgia bands, bro. We're in yeah. the nostalgic age right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but like, you know, um, we weren't actively pursuing it or anything, I would say. And yeah. then um, we, I, I'm full disclosure, social media, all that and anything like that, I, I, I'm terrible with. So mm-hmm. I think Maruso, our drummer, was running the Instagram and we got a, we got a message from them saying like hey who should we talk to about booking you guys and then um chad the the guy who runs it who's the nicest dude on the planet yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i've only met him via like zoom call but um awesome guy uh so yeah, I he's like that in real him. life he's like that in real life for sure i believe it yeah he was uh, he was awesome so i just like i had a bunch of questions like what what is this going to entail so uh we had a quick zoom call the one day and hashed things out and um and we were able we were lucky enough to to join the lineup this year so uh yeah but uh yeah like all the behind the scenes stuff that people are posting like i don't know man that's the, i don't know how they do that the, there's technology out there that i don't really i'm not able to wrap my head around and so uh they've been they've been working on that but yeah man the furnace fest thing is super cool we're, we're looking forward to it yeah it's a total vibe you know and i mean uh it's something that i didn't get to take part of when it originally happened because i was you know youngster like 17 18 years old and <laughs> It was states away, unfortunately, at that particular time. But I will say that being a grown adult in close to my 40s going, it's probably better. It's probably a better time. So, uh, you know, we've definitely enjoyed covering it and going there. And it's just it's a good time because all the bands get together. It's kind of like, I don't know, it makes you think like old, like 20 years ago. You know, it makes you feel like that. But um, yeah, so let's get back into like the reunion thing. Um, Is it the... uh, members are the members the same or you have like a hodgepodge of Kurt I want to say current and old members but obviously you haven't been current quote unquote in the last couple of years but is it a mixture of like people that were in the band or do you have like an you know 
Yeah, it's it's not a scab lineup. Uh, <laughs> so it's 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 not a scab lineup. It's um it's everybody who was on uh the Kadif Choir and uh the second record we did. So okay. Siren. So those two records, same lineup. Um and yeah, I mean we've we about nine years ago it was the same deal. We did like a ten year anniversary thing for Kadif Choir, uh, which was a lot of fun and ended up writing some songs and stuff during that time that just never materialized, never saw a light of day or anything. And uh, so all the same dudes from that, and uh, we're just uh, rehearsing a lot and uh, and ready, re- getting ready for this. So hopefully <laughs> be putting out some of these songs too yeah, I was, uh, I was eventually. Gonna ask, I was going to ask if, like what the plan is uh, for, for the material that either was unreleased back then or the stuff that you kind of figured out in the meantime in the – dreary practice space that you guys have been posting um dude, dude we, we have to address that uh, <laughs> that practice space is uh is it a snuff is, film location do they do snuff it, films there or something because it looks like it sometimes they might um <laughs> they might um yeah we uh it's funny like that place has been around forever and uh it's kind of like in the center of where we all live so it's it's pretty close to all of us and it made the most sense and uh it's just random like that was where we started like 20 some years ago and uh and so it's it's interesting going back like 20 years later and being like wow all right we're (laughs) still in this building (laughs) great we've we've arrived (laughs) yeah here we are um Um, but it it works that's cool (laughs) that's cool uh i definitely want to get into kind of like just old old band stuff with you guys uh just because i was a big fan back in the day uh but i kind of want to make sure i kind of want to make sure we we get everything going that you have currently yeah. light a day before we lose all the listeners so uh with the new material coming out do you guys have any kind of like and again this doesn't come out for a couple of weeks so i don't know if you have anything in, coming in announcements or if you want to wait until after the furnace fest or whatnot but do you guys have an idea of like when this material may see the light of day Roughly, I mean, so we had we had hoped um, to at least get two songs completed and recorded and pressed for a seven inch for Furnace Fest. Uh, I don't I don't foresee that happening just based on wait times for vinyl, yeah. and we still need to like. I mean, the one song isn't even recorded; uh, it's demoed, but it's not recorded. And the other one, like, I need to go redo the vocals because they're from like ten years ago. Um, so we're hoping i don't know fall winter maybe if not like we, we're also hoping maybe we just release it for stream leading up to for furnace fest uh we're talking to to some folks who, who might help us with that so it's all kind of up in the air uh but maybe hopefully by hopefully by furnace fest we'll have something out yeah uh, and there's also talks of the one demo we basically released in 2014 uh, just releasing that for streaming. So there, there's a few things up in the air right now, but um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And uh, refresh my memory. I know you guys did something with Trustkill. Was it the Kate Choir 20 year? Yeah, I mean, we didn't have too much to do with that. <clears throat> Truthfully, like Josh, that like he he finally got back the catalog of all yeah. Trustkill yeah. bands, and so I think he partnered with. I, I think, and this is, I don't know, but I think he partnered with Revolver, and they basically released yeah. a bunch of. Um, I forget what the series is called, but excuse me, the vinyl looks dope. Um, and uh, yeah, he released that a, I don't know, a month, a couple months ago, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I didn't know if um, I didn't know if you know that was not. That, I mean, not that you guys had anything to do with it or anything like that. But I didn't know if that was the only thing that you guys have done in the recent uh, past about maybe like some kind of like anniversary or like re-release type situation but i wasn't sure if there was another one in that because i know like lividity also but that came out like a couple years later so i don't know when that would have been maybe like a 10 year but yeah i don't know when that came out i think it was 09 or 10 or 2010 09 or 2010 i don't i I don't know um i was thinking of seven jeez i wasn't really around so you're right you're right (laughs) yeah (laughs) uh but um yeah cool well um Let's get let's get into some it dies today stuff. Sure. Cool. I have a lot of questions. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, let's do this, it, man. This, you guys were a band before I uh, before I started working with Lamb Goat that I had no idea what the hell happened to you guys for a long, long time, uh, and it could be because you know I moonlined I moonlighted in and out of the scene 
in the 2010s to 2015. But, uh, you know, I was in and out doing other things and focusing elsewhere. But I know when you guys came on the scene, man, uh, you guys quickly became one of my favorite, like, metalcore bands. Uh, and it could have been just because of the imagery of your um, videos and obviously, like, the fashion core thing was in the full swing around that time. The swooped hair. The, it was great marketing, the, right? Yeah, like, the buttoned-up shirts. Like, the, yeah, it was the, great heavy, marketing. the heavily photoshopped band photos. All these things were just kicking, uh, you know, kicking in tins. But um, yeah, what do you think? Like, what do you think led to the success of the band early, early on? Uh, honestly, just working. <laughs> like, like we started the band in two thousand one, um, and basically, like Chris, our guitar player, uh, Maruso, who's our drummer, and me were in this like really. I mean. For like 15 and 16 year olds it was probably pretty cool uh but we just loved hate breed and I was gonna say, like, are, you, are you doing like a metallica cover band because that's usually no, what all no. the 14 year olds are doing in that time we I, I i played some pantera covers with some other guys from high school prior to that but uh no it was like it, it basically we just really liked hate breed and buried alive and like all the like a lot of those there you go man i still love hate breed <laughs> um <laughs> so um so we started like a band I think it was like our, my sophomore year of high school and that fizzled out like the one dude went away to college and so we um it's funny like you posted that I think you guys posted that flyer from Health Fest yeah. 01 yeah. and that was like I'd say that was that was the first festival we had ever gone to so Chris myself and then one of our other buddies went to that and then saw I mean that's probably one of the most insane lineups yeah. uh <laughs> At the time, I've, not so much, but looking back, like with with what we know now, it's crazy. Yeah. One second. Basically, right, like every, no, you're good. Basically, like everyone from any record label that was doing anything in the scene. Yeah, I mean, it, it was insane, and so like we we went to that and came home, and we're like, okay, we need, we know what we, need, <laughs> we know what we need to do now, and uh, and basically like just we started at dice today we grabbed like message boards were real big back then and there was oh a you buffalo. don't say yeah 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 so i'm dating myself obviously but <laughs> uh like there was a buffalo shows message board and uh like reached out to a couple of people on there and like started the band in like my living room and uh and then moved to our shitty uh <laughs> practice space in cheek new york not too long after that but um so we, we quickly recorded a demo, um, and, like, I'd say probably two, three months after the band started, we just started doing weekends and doing DIY weekends and stuff like that. We kind of changed members a little bit. Russo came back to the band um, pretty early on, and then it was just kind of, like, gung-ho from there. And basically, like, every single weekend, uh, every single high school break, like spring break, winter break, we were either booking tours or doing weekends – um our first like full on tour i think was like 2002 and actually that was like the first my first introduction with to like alex and like lamb goat and all that <laughs> yeah and i just was like hey dude we've got all these dates booked <laughs> uh with barrier dead who was like brand right, new right, band right. at the time and uh so that was like our first tour uh where like that was relatively extensive i think it was like 2 weeks and uh as like a, I don't even know how old I was, sixteen or seventeen. Uh, that was, that was one of the most insane things I've ever been a part of. Yeah. Uh, how just long of the tour was that? I think it was like two weeks. Okay. Um, it started in like, started in Charlotte. I remember we did like a straight drive <laughs> down to Charlotte in the middle of summer, uh, in a van I bought for two hundred bucks. Uh, Surprise! You got from, there. Surprise! Um, you got there we didn't get home in it uh <laughs> we got to charlotte i i think we got to we got up to like long island so we played a couple of shows our bass player at the time like we went to pick him up and his parents were just like you're not driving in that like you're not going with them if you're driving so he was following us in like a chevy trailblazer or something oh, wow and uh yeah anyway so it, it, the the lineup of barrier dead at that time that was like their original lineup after they got rid of like the second they had two singers for the mm -hmm, demo mm -hmm, i feel mm -hmm. like yeah and it was just like joe kruko and like mark uh and, and rich and, and uh slim and they were just 
those dudes were nuts. Um, I, it was the most fun I've ever had, but also like the craziest stuff I've ever seen on tour. Some of it, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, but um, it was like two weeks long, I, I feel like, and uh, it was it was all right. I mean, for you know DIY like yeah. high school kids, it was it did it was okay. Um, there was a couple of really good shows on it, but uh, yeah, that was like the first like extensive tour we did, and then again like later that winter we did. Uh, like a tour of the south and back up to we went to texas played with all out war on some like diy fest mm-hmm. which was sick because all out war is awesome i want to say every like, time every time you bring up a festival from back in the day you probably don't have to state it was diy because it was all it all felt diy back then <laughs> that's you know what that's that's a good point <laughs> it's weird because i talk, i tried talking about i was just talking about to scott uh lee from uh new england, metal fest yeah. yeah new england metal and hardcore fest and I was like, dude, I I started going to festival because I, I went to like Hellfest 04. That was like, you know, the last Hellfest. And I was there yeah. at that one. And we all drove up from like Florida for it. And it was like weird because like I would only go to festivals in this little world. Like the yeah. only thing, the only festival it, type thing I would go to is like hardcore metal. And that was it. And then it, it's like every show back then was turned festival. into a festival yeah. <laughs> yeah. like let's just toss 12 bands on this bill and call it a fest yeah and or uh even multi, it, multi-day festivals that's like the first intro to that you know hardcore and, and metal were the only ones and like i would travel away from my home base like you know out of state to go to these things and like sleep in our van and it was just it was rough but then i would get you know 10 years go by 15 years go by and then like bonnaroo i, I started going like bonnaroo and stuff and i was like this is all cool and all, but like, dude, I was doing this like as a teenager in like the yeah. weirdest way. Yeah, it's uh, that's yeah, funny to think back about, but yeah, there was uh, some definitely sketchy, <laughs> sketchy festivals. I'm surprised uh, it all worked. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised everything kind of worked out as well as it did for those time periods. Because like, oh yeah, you know, like I, I talked to speaking of another weird micro festival I went to as a youngster. I had Between the Buried and Me on at one point a couple years ago, and I brought up this, like, really obscure festival that I would saw them at. They were, like, one of the headliners. And this was, like, Silent Circus time, but it was, like, Bunny Fest is what it was called, and it was late. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Were you guys there? <laughs> we might have been, yeah. I think, actually, you were there. But you anyway. Know, that's a great segue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but this was, like, on a, a wharf. It was, like, on a wharf somewhere, like, and we literally just showed up. And I think Six Feet Under was supposed to play. They show up, and they're like, yeah, we're not playing. <laughs> but Barnes, it was crazy. It was crazy. I don't doubt we were on that. Um, it was like Savannah, but, Georgia, or some weird Georgia. It's possible. Like, the first real full tour we did was with, with those guys, uh, BT Bam, uh, Alexis on Fire, mm. and Taken. Cool. And that was the first, that was like, that when you say like all right like how did how did things start to kind of shift that tour was it like for sure that started in like massachusetts somewhere and like made its way across the country it was the first time we went to the west coast uh and it was just bananas like the the reaction like it was a it was a solid tour and all the guys were amazing on that tour um but the shows were sick sold a ton of merch mm-hmm. like we're like okay this is a little different like this is not this is not what we're used to and that like after that we had done something stupid like that summer i think i booked us like i don't know 100 dates or something like that yeah. like we were it, most of which were canceled <laughs> uh so we, so we didn't we didn't end up doing it but like we went from touring with undying and a couple other bands that are gonna escape me right now uh and that undying tour unfortunately fell through that was like one of my favorite bands yeah i was gonna say that's uh, a good band dude love that band um and then, like, another North Carolina band with BT Bam after that. But, um, yeah, that, that that summer was nuts. Um, just a stupid amount of dates. And, like I said, a lot of them got canceled. But, like, we ended up doing a lot of traveling anyway because we would just show up and nobody would be there. <laughs> um, <laughs> the good old so, days, huh? The good old days. Yeah, man. Uh, the one show, I think it was, like, Detroit. We showed up. The promoter didn't. Couldn't get a hold of them. Uh, and just there was like 50 kids just like waiting and they're like, the one guy was like oh screw it like follow me back to my house and we'll just play on my deck so we ended up doing that which was pretty sweet yeah I think that's like, like 
in our little in our little world that seems to happen a lot yeah that was yeah. fine it worked uh there was like 50 kids moshing in his backyard and like <laughs> yeah i'm I'm actually just picturing like the the in this i probably shouldn't be because it's like an insane visual but like the chariot playing that little place the, in australia like, and then they go to yeah, the yeah. house and then they tear that guy's house up or some shit but yeah it wasn't that intense <laughs> i will say that it was cool it was really cool and i don't but, say uh, that because like eight dice today's music isn't on the same par as you know the chariot because it's all it's definitely as good as or heavy as but you know, there's something about the chariot just being like they don't They're care insane. about yeah they don't care about their personal yeah. safety or well being. No. They're insane. Yeah, <laughs> I love I love those guys. So it's uh, no that that uh, Australian show is that that video is worth a watch for yeah, sure if you haven't seen it. Which I'm yeah. sure you're old and forty years old like me and Nick here are around that age. So you've probably seen it on the internet when it first happened. Um, so yeah, I want to go kind of back into like the success the early success of the band because it kind of sounds like you guys weren't a band for super duper long before you guys kind of started making some waves, whether it's locally. And then of course you guys got picked up by uh Truskill. And then like in 2004, you released, you know, the Kate of choir, which uh, is a seminal album for you guys. I would, it's, I would think you would agree that that's probably a, a big namesake for you guys. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. mean, we're, we're able to do kind of the, the, the fun stuff we're doing later in life based on that. So it's, um, you know, definitely changed a lot for us. So, is it weird? Excuse me. Is it weird that something that you did as like a late teen, early twenty year old is like taken <laughs> so seriously by now forty year old, fifty year old people, <laughs> and they like they just they hold it so dear to their life and to their being? I will say this: I'm extremely appreciative of anybody who does feel that way. For me, it's weird because it's like I wrote that stuff when I was probably like seventeen or eighteen, mm -hmm. and it's like, man, what, like, what was I doing? Yeah, um, you, you don't have a lip ring. Like, you don't have a lip ring now. You know, no, you had one then. No. So, <laughs> uh, thesaurus dot com was was my jam back then, and like, just you know, obviously liked big words, and uh, it was just like, uh, I don't know. I think all of us are like super appreciative. Love that uh, we like look back on it fondly, but like, there's definitely things about it that were like, oh, I'm sure. You know what I mean? It's kind of cringy um, to an extent, but <laughs> what what are some? Um, what are, I have to ask? What are some of the things yeah. that make you guys cringe? Um, for me, uh, for me personally, like uh, just the vocals in general and a lot of the lyrics. Really? Um, like I didn't know how to sing. I really didn't know how to record and and like at a studio or like. Uh, you know what I mean? Like any any recording experience I had up till that point was just like, all right, hey, let's go do let's just go track it and be done with it um so i just think like i i don't know i i probably could have and just like a lot of the lyrics i look back and i'm like i wish i could have that <laughs> you, one but back. yeah that yeah i, I understand the yeah. lyrical content part yeah. but i want to probably say like as a a fan of the band then and now the vocals aren't aren't off so i wouldn't necessarily worry about the vocals in that you know i mean i appreciate that you as it's your voice so i understand why you're nitpicking it but like i never it never even i was like yeah. it could be better you know it was never like that <laughs> it was never like yeah that. it's you know it's just it's probably like a personal thing but like in general like we i don't know i don't know what else i would say is like kind of cringy maybe some of the riffs like we definitely rushed through some of those songs and uh like there's there's ones that we just won't play uh and it's it's kind of like a group decision like we just there's certain songs on that album that's just like that's just not, not very good uh so so like when we did that 10 year thing i think there was like one i think it was like one or two songs we were like we're just we'll play something else so but ultimately yeah it's you know it's something we're proud of it was like our first real album and um you know leading up to that was was pretty wild like we had a pretty bit we like changed our members like leading up to that and um we had a show in like syracuse where we were playing with unearth we were opening for them which was awesome and like somebody had a scheduling conflict so like mike hadillac who plays guitar now um came and like filled in and we had he'd been recording us like our demos and doing stuff and we had been like asking him for probably like two years or so to join the band and he's just, oh, i'm good i don't <laughs> want to and um came played that on our show he's like this is pretty cool uh i might I've been be trying into to it, tell so... you we've been trying to tell you man yeah yeah so 
so we ended up getting him in the band and shifted some members around and stuff and then uh did a demo with him of like it was three songs and it was like marigold um uh, depravity and uh severed ties so we did those three as like a demo just to try and maybe shop around or just give to people um and we ended up getting like pretty decent interest in it so and, and actually i got a backtrack <laughs> so victory was because it's kind of a funny story so anyway uh victory at our show in like tampa i think on the bt bam show they had like an a and r guy show up and was just like yeah tony tony likes the band we might be interested in this that and the other and it just never nothing came of it right and then a year and a half later, as we're like signing the contracts with Trustkill, Tony emails my personal email address. No idea how he got it. And uh, he's like, hey, I'm interested in signing you guys now. And I was like, hey, I literally just signed a contract with Trustkill. Mm. And uh, his response back was in like 87 font. Ha, 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 ha. And it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. So shout out Tony. Uh, so was he victory. was he supportive of that move or not supportive? That was, that, that was the end of the conversation. That was it. But um, so anyway, so we. Um, That's wild that the you know, and I'm I don't I have no ill will to either person Tony or Josh because I've talked I've talked to Josh quite a bit. So when I hear uh, you know past stories about him and whatnot, and I've talked to him about some of those things, like yeah. you know. It is what it is. I don't have a stake in that game, and I've only known – I know Josh at face value, so it is what it is. And he's never been a bad dude to me. He's been helpful and whatever. But anyway, uh, it's always weird finding out just stuff about, like, early record label stuff in the scene just because, you know, like, at the time, Tony or Josh or anybody, Carl or, you know, any other Brian from Metal Blade, they were, like, smaller independent labels that really did grow into, like – something oh, yeah. you know what i mean yeah like, it's yeah crazy. and like and to be honest with you like victory we wouldn't have been a band without without victory and like i don't know tony, i don't know tony i just i know him based on the one email <laughs> and i thought it was the funniest thing ever um but like dude like all those victory early victory band not early but all those victory bands in like the early 2000s late 90s oh, yeah. um like that was the gateway drug into into hardcore and like you picked up one of those records and you got into everything um and then you're buying the merch and you're going to the shows and i don't know but um back to the I'm all over the place but like for it. so we do this demo um our we had like an attorney i don't know how that worked out i think it was through hadalac um we had like an entertainment attorney and he was he was like pretty close with the metal blade guys and as I lay dying had we had done some touring with them and they just got signed with metal blade and the Glay were like, you know, hyping us a little bit. And our attorney basically gave him the demo. Um, we met, they came out for like a showcase to Buffalo. Um, because actually the one guy, Mike Faley, uh, he's from Buffalo and it went really well. Uh, they made us an offer. Then century media made us an offer. Uh, and then Matt Don, who did all the Syracuse shows, um, and kind of like did some work with Truskill and stuff too. He finally like passed our demo off to Josh and, uh, then Josh came at us with an offer. And at the time it was like, all right, well, this is a no brainer. Like every, every huge band right now is, is signing to Truskill. Like we should too kind of deal. So, yeah. um, you know, it worked out. It afforded a lot of opportunities for us and it was cool. So, so is that why you guys chose Truskill out, out, outside of all those bands? I mean, cause I'm looking back you know that we've had 20 years go between now and then yeah. and like you know you're you're talking like people are going to be like you turned down metal blade and century media you idiot you know what i'm saying but like even then at the time they weren't as big as they are now but what was like the because obviously tony was a little late at, in the game so he, that, <laughs> that wasn't on the table but you know uh what what was the what was really the the force that made you go with Trustkill? Was it because he was kind of closer to you guys in, in like location? Um, or, you know, did he just woo you the best? I think I wouldn't say that because like, even after the fact, like we were pretty close with, uh, with Mike for metal blade. Cause you know, uh, he would be, we'd see him at shows and different things like that. Yeah. Uh, and, 
and at that time, Metal Blade was signing like a ton of like metalcore bands. So it was like it was in you know I'm not saying anything disparaging against uh, Central some of them didn't anything, work you know? out. Some of them didn't work yeah, out. We know. Yeah, exactly. So like I just thought, uh, and I think we thought like the Trust Kill's kind of approach, their style, um, and a lot of different things about that we liked. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think them kind of having more of a um, a background like we, we grew up listening to a lot of those bands right, too right, right. you know what I mean and I think that carried a lot of weight like the the fact that there were like some seminal hardcore releases on Trustkill that we still to this day listen to I think carried a lot of weight so um, so I think that was part of it you know what I mean and I thought like the roster of Trustkill was smaller yeah I was gonna say and, and like Century Media is this global huge label yeah we get more attention uh, I f- more, more i figured we would have gotten lost in the shuffle probably and then metal blade i i honestly I, I don't it was really between those two i would say but um i just uh i think we were all kind of just like they put out some really great bands i think we'd love to be a part of it kind of deal so yeah and honestly i think it the timing of the not creative. to say that metal blade again not <laughs> disparaging and metal blade no, no, no. has some of my favorite albums of all time of so course. just and saying it's just a different you know different look, vibe nick we're all big goo goo dolls fans <laughs> okay we understand but there are different oh. yeah i mean those those early goo goo dolls records no, let me i know tell you. hey you need you for, you can't you have yeah. to have iris to have like all the other bands right you have Bro. to have iris to have all the other bands you got to have nickelback to have all the other bands. on anything and i'm yeah. in like it sounds like the replacements, which is one of my favorite bands ever. So like, <laughs> you give me that all day long. So I'm not hating, you know. What I mean, the, man, <laughs> the man's got, uh, you know, what is it? Who is it? John Bon Jovi. That's not it. Goo Dolls. Yeah, the Goo Dolls. They're making money. So and they're making, yeah, you know, enough. and they made Metal Blade a lot of money to reinvest into other worse bands than you know Goo Goo Dolls. So it's, it's yeah. it all pays for itself in some point. But I go. think I think the timing of you guys joining Trustkill and just that that wave at that time early early 2000s i think you guys going with trust kill probably gave you a lot more credibility than it would have going with the other out uh the other outlets not that those outlets were subpar but like there was something to be said about like ferret and trust kill really like having a stranglehold on those like early 2000 years when it came to like hardcore metal metalcore bands it felt like any band that they put out that automatically had like a this stamp of approval for the most you know most people in the scene to to like that music and stuff like that. And I'm sure like you know yeah people wouldn't like 18 Visions because this reason or Brothers Keeper for this reason or you know fucking Nora for this reason or whatever. But like those lineups on both of those levels, those rosters on both of those levels, uh, um, labels, like you said, they were small enough so you could have like more time with the label directly. If you needed that, uh, you don't get lost in the shuffle as much. And really at that time there wasn't like, and I'm sure I'm probably hurting people's feelings that are on that label at that time, (laughs) but there wasn't like a giant band, right? There wasn't like the one big band at that particular point. There were some bands that were really bubbling up and like, you know, metalcore started to like really do some stuff because around this time frame, you have Hellfest kind of like coming to an end. But then you had like Ozfest taking on uh, a lot of like hardcore and metal acts on the second stage, and then you had Taste of Chaos and Warp Tour and everything. So I think it was like a great moment in time and a great choice on you guys' part to choose Trustkill. I think you rode that wave really well. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like I said, dude, it 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 um. It afforded us a lot of really cool opportunities, and uh, and to your point, like yeah, we if we wanted to talk to Josh or one of the other guys that that worked at the label, there it, we we knew where to go. You know what I mean? It was it, it just felt a little different than than some of the other stuff that was out there, and um, you know that was right around the time too. To your point, like all those all the bands from the OC, like Throwdown, Bleeding Through, yeah. uh, Eighteen Visions, all those bands were were, were getting better, bigger. Um, and uh you know we looked up to those guys a lot and it was cool uh so yeah um where does the decline of the band start to start to happen because obviously you guys uh, have there's rough patches and now you guys are coming back out and it's a big new 
you know, positive story. But there's there's some downtime in between that or in between now and then. So I just kind of want to go over that. Yeah, yeah. So I would say we did our our second album after like I think like two years of touring on Cadiff Choir. I want to say, um, and basically just like locked ourselves in a studio for a couple months and and wrote that and then um went out to vancouver recorded that with uh garth richardson uh which was incredible uh he's one of the nicest dudes on the planet and i don't know loves hockey and the sabers and the canucks were playing each other in the playoffs at that time Mm. so um sometimes maybe the those vocal sessions weren't exactly like productive because it was (laughs) mostly just watching hockey but um so we did that um and then the first like real tour after that i would say is like i was kind of just not into it anymore um and it was just it was a lot of touring and i wasn't super stoked about metalcore <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, like yeah, no, i get it dude like i just like and, and nothing against nothing against metalcore or anybody here who enjoys it it's just it, it it's not my cup of tea right and like i just it was hard to get like pumped about playing it every night and uh i just i didn't really want to be a part of it anymore and there was like i was writing other music and i wanted to kind of focus on that um yeah because you did so, some solo stuff you know after you left the band and whatnot so yeah i i basically i started a, a band like coming out of that with a bunch of my friends from buffalo and it we didn't do anything uh we recorded a couple of things and it didn't really go anywhere like we had some weird not weird but like interesting label interest i I would say like just kind of like hey we want to talk and like maybe we'll put out your album and it just it didn't work out um and and needless to say so like i kind of wanted to do my own thing they got jason um Mm -hmm. who's on lividity Mm -hmm. to do vocals uh and we knew him through touring with uh still remains and stuff so he had been playing bass for them and filling in with them and he's got a great voice um and so like it was kind of like an obvious choice and he was play- playing a band in uh grand rapids i think called the the orphan and uh so they moved on and that was cool and everybody was good like i think after like a month or two of like us going our separate ways like everybody was cool with it and uh supportive of each other so uh so i like I'll tell you this, like, like the history of the band at that point, like, I, I don't know no what clue. happened after yeah, that. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't assume you do. Yeah, I was doing my own thing, and they were doing their own thing, and, like, I know they went to, like, Australia and Europe and stuff like that, um, which is pretty sick. How much longer but, did they really have a, I mean, how, how much longer was their run after you left the band? I mean, I know they did, uh, after, after you leaving, a year or two goes by, they put Lividity out, and then... I don't necessarily remember hearing a lot about them after that particular point because that's the last album that they that the band put out. Yeah, I don't I don't know really how much touring they did behind it. Um, and I think you know, I, again, I, I I don't I'm probably the wrong guy to ask what yeah, happened during no, that, I get that that point. Yeah, so I would just I would say things probably slowed down, and I, I don't know, um, but I know I think. I think people started having kids around that part. Yeah, that point sounds in time about too. right. Like getting yeah, I, 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 right. like truthfully, I think I think people started having families and stuff, and like life started behind. happening. You had to get a real yeah. job, all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that was that, and then we got together like 2012, 2011. Did like a benefit um, to, for our friend uh, Tony Lorenzo. So he he was in an incident and was shot. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was paralyzed, which was awful, and rest in peace. But uh, we did a benefit for him, uh, and then there was like nothing for another couple of years, and then we did like the ten year anniversary thing. Yeah, so it, it was a long, but, slow crawl for that metalcore snake to come up and bite you. I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's it's been quiet, and like the last nine years, it was a thing of like we started to write, we started to do some stuff, we started to gain some momentum, I guess, and. It just, I don't think anybody was into or in a place to be focusing on It Dies Today, yeah. uh, if that makes sense. Like, I went back to school um, and finished my degree and, and had a ki- bunch of kids. And uh, 
a lot of like all of us have families and careers yeah. and stuff yeah. so it's just like this is now we're, we're just looking at it as like let's get in a room together and just have fun and if if there's opportunities to go and play then awesome like that's yeah. crazy that we're lucky enough to be able to do that so yeah it's it is um kind of cool to think back that something that, like a body of work that you produced almost 20 years ago <clears throat> now allows you to kind of do similar the same stuff but with zero pressure now because like you've aged matured you've kind of lived life in general and now you don't necessarily have to like stress about the record being good the song being good will people like it it's just you guys want to do it because you want to do it that and we yeah exactly we can do whatever the hell we want you know what i mean it's like we don't have to like hey this song needs to be this formula or it needs to be this style or like if we want to i don't know put out just an old school hardcore song <laughs> like if we wanted to do that we can do that you yeah. know what i mean like so it's um it's nice to have that kind of like that freedom and uh and not really have any any pressure on us to do anything so uh yeah that's cool i want to talk about you losing your love for metalcore and maybe what happened when it started that maybe maybe because i feel like i i also went through the same pangs around the same time <clears throat> and part of me i think um I think I grew out of metalcore, and I and I think at the time I was super into metalcore, not so much metal or hardcore for that matter, but it was all in the same realm. <clears throat> so you know, going to shows, I would see both those band, both types of those bands, but I was really drawn to metalcore, right? And I wanted to ask you because you guys may have been a part of that unknowingly, like you guys, your sound was very. Um, palatable by a lot of people even outside of the scene right uh you guys are shooting videos they're on mtv mtv2 you know you're on you know like historical music television channels and stuff like that your videos being played and whatnot but then also <clears throat> this music starting to find its way into like hot topic and all these other like little areas and more of the common world starts to find this music and then i also feel like people start writing the music to maybe i don't know be on tv more whether it's like on a show in a background on the show or maybe a music video or you know maybe getting into hot topic or whatnot and i feel yeah. like a lot of that whether and again i'm not shitting on the fashion core thing because my band is guilty of it too but i think that whole movement was cool but also really not it was detrimental a little dude bit. it jumped it jumped the shark real quick yeah. like <laughs> it's just... faster than new metal almost you know what i mean like really yeah. quick <clears throat> so like i don't know i like i i come from a place of like i was always into like punk i was into hardcore i was into metallic hardcore and uh and metal um and like i don't know i just uh i started listening to more uh, just different music and just kind of lost like I don't know when you're when you're doing the same thing you, you find yourself kind of like saying the same thing every single night to the to the crowd and like there's there's not really like there's no passion behind it you know it's more just like this is the thing that I say at this part because that's you know it's it's like metal by numbers kind of deal yeah mm -hmm. um the commercial commercial commercialization of it I don't know it is what it is it, it's going to happen whatever kind of music you know what I mean it's but it's um i just i don't know i just i didn't want to do it anymore like okay. i i, I there's i still like to this day i still listen to you know hardcore bands and and punk and stuff like that and i just never like and i'll and listen also, to like a lot all the bands that kind of like inspired a lot of like the earlier <clears throat> metalcore bands you know what i mean like all right, the right, right. you know gothenburg bands uh stuff like that but it's just to me it just I just wasn't into it you know what i mean and i did like uh, it, it came to a point of like you're spending 250 days a year doing something that you're not into so <laughs> like go yeah. home <laughs> figure stuff out and and go on from there so yeah. and again it's not to say like i hate metalcore or anything like that it's just i don't know i like uh, more into kind of like the metallic hardcore thing and i, oh, I think those two things are very different oh yeah, you know they, are, I mean? they are they are there and, and you know and, we've come now to where like everything's kind of just like 
whirlpool together to make yeah. some weird And I'm stuff. also not trying to be the guy to be like, oh, let's shit on Metalcore, because it's easy to do. Of you course, know what I yeah, mean? Like, yeah, 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 for it's, sure. Like, to your point, like, Metalcore has become what new Metal was, like, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's people really you know look down on it to an extent and like that's not my point it's just like at that point in time in like 2006 i was just like yeah i don't want to do this anymore yeah so. and again that was uh <laughs> that, that might have been like the, the start of the decline like that might have been the decline of the peak right so like it was it was wildly popular then bro some of those bands that came out and like <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna name any bands but like some of these bands it was just like it was like a factory of bands <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. that came and out again, that's why it, I, that's why i brought up the mtv thing because yeah, yeah. there was and like it, a weird vibe to where like yeah they're they're metal they're metal core but they're also are, yeah, not they're adjacent metal core. yeah they're adjacent like a, a lot of that stuff i'm like how the hell is this the same it's it's obviously not coming from the same place you know what i mean like yeah. i don't know it's but yeah, late, late, late aughts into 2010s, man, mm-hmm. weird time. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah. And that might have been so, why I kind of like moved on a little bit to other, yeah. other genres and other things. But <clears throat> I, I will say that going back and revisiting, I mean, I revisit a lot of my older stuff that I listened to back then, uh, you know, you guys and all the Trust Kill, Ferret bands and, you know, Victory and, and Rev HQ bands and stuff like that. But now I find myself, like you were just saying, listening to like the people who inspired those bands way more than those than those bands in that pocket but i also started listening to like way more hardcore than i used to and i've i'm more into you know that um it just i don't know man it was a weird weird time for like a do-it-yourself type scene to be like cash grabbing (laughs) just weird (laughs) yeah it was uh it was an interesting time but i don't know now you see like there's so many new like dope hardcore bands and um like punk bands and stuff like that that are th- like the cool thing to me now is like the stuff that's getting big doesn't suck like no, yeah, it's yeah. getting bi- it's getting big because those dudes are just like we're going to keep doubling down on you know doing whatever the hell we want and yeah. i think that <laughs> that's the biggest difference is like i don't know like our second record's mostly singing and stuff like that. That was a conscious decision. It wasn't because like, you know, we want it to be. Or it's. I, let me set this straight. Josh from Trustkill literally has had no say in anything we've ever written. Uh, and I know the dude. Like I remember the the comments back in the day were always <laughs> just like. They saw the trust kill and now they're singing. It's like, dude, go back to our demo. We were we were singing on that. I mean, you were like, singing just, on we, some of the better songs. I mean, the, some of yeah, the big songs on we, your previous album. We're 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 doing it a little better now. <laughs> I, I might have figured it out a little bit, at least in the studio, right? Uh, <laughs> so, but like the only thing he ever, the only feedback we got from him was, I remember handing in sirens. He's like, dude, you need more breakdowns. I was like, okay, or <laughs> it needs to be heavier or something like that. I was like, well, I like this, so this is this is it. So. But um, I don't know where I was going with that. I got I lost track. But, Josh has uh, no input. Yeah. So like I, I just think I think now it's cool to see bands like not that we felt pressured to like we just want to do something different than what we were doing. But I mean like, I feel like I, I not to say that you were pressured, and I definitely don't want to think that you were, pre- and I definitely don't want you to say that you were pressured by Josh or anything like that. But I think there was a pressure from like the overall just. An, un, an unknowing pressure from like everyone in the scene and every band. Like you definitely. I don't know. Looking back on it, it was like a weird time because like you don't know you're in the swing of this like big movement, but you do feel like the pressure of like your local scene of like you read things on the Internet and like, you know, you see bands doing this, that, the other stuff and you, you see bands putting out material and they're getting signed and you see these bands putting out this material and not getting signed or doing whatever. And so there is like some kind of weird pressure, maybe not from the label or, you know, personal pressure in your head, but I think there is. And I think you guys had such a great first record that there was going to be pressure anyway to follow that. I, up. Th- I think the pressure, like we, we put it on ourselves for sure. Yeah. It was more so like, let's not do that again. Like let's, let's think about this differently and try some new stuff out, and, you know, in our heads, what we wanted to achieve with it was way different than what came out in execution, I think. Um, and like, I still, like, I still like that second record, but, um, like in my head it's like 
if we had maybe like what if we had doubled down and just said screw it let's be the most brutal version of ourselves that we can and still mix in some melody or whatever all right cool maybe that would have worked better i don't at this point like this is what it is i don't i don't have any regrets so it's mm. but i think the point i'm trying to make is just like now you do see bands who are just like okay that was super heavy that that was popular and now we're gonna get heavier and people are gonna eat it up and it's it's really fun to watch so yeah i think one of the cool things about the difference in the uh in the environment that we are in is back then there wasn't the prevalent like use of social media though we did have like myspace which was huge for our little movement you know um but i think now it's really like you don't necessarily need like a label to push you or, you know, you, if you, as long as you have like a basic decent team around you and a fan base who's rabid, which doesn't take much to find in like the world of hardcore, especially these days on Twitter or TikTok or Instagram. Like <clears throat> I'm sure you've seen mosh content oh, yeah. has been, has just become like crazy. You know, the, the, the invisible ninja fighters and walls of death and just all sorts of like, typical mosh content that we've seen throughout the last decades of our life is like now new to like a vast majority of those people that are on these apps and they're finding bands that are causing these mosh pits and they're finding that music for the first time. Those bands could be the small band playing Denny's or a laundromat or on a street a dude somewhere. overnight. Yeah. And then next thing yeah. you know, they don't need a record label and they don't need all that. Yeah. So it's really, it's really cool, but they're also biting all these, new sounds and old sounds like new metal is definitely live and, and well and hardcore and people can hate that all they want but it's fucking there and just like bands you know a lot of bands from our time grew up listening to slipknot and that it permeated some of the music at some point and now bands are listening to like your band but also slipknot limp biscuit you know other new hardcore bands and they're all mixing and melding that together now so it's it's kind of crazy how heavy music is just really uh, blossomed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you, just you talking about moshing and, uh, uh, you know, going viral. Uh, just Twitter discourse, <laughs> excuse me, discourse about moshing is one of the funniest things Where do on you the stand? planet. To Where me. do you stand on it? Oh, dude, do whatever. I don't give it. I don't care. Like, I, there was a point in time where, like, I got – because the – the audience started to change a little bit <laughs> you know what i mean so there would be yeah. you know more younger kids and stuff like that up in the front row so the, the audience changed and then you know when the crowd killing started and it was just like defenseless like teenage kids and stuff like that i was like all right this is kind of it's yeah. kind of lame this isn't when as did... cool as it used to be but you know i i think if we're all adults go do whatever you gotta do when, when did the crowd killing start happening around in your area is that something you guys just had to it, deal with in the beginning, it, or is that something that progressed to something? I mean, honestly, it never – it wasn't really a big thing in Buffalo, I would say. Um, but, like, when we first started going around, like, the East Coast, um, so, like, Massachusetts. Definitely. Uh, yeah, Mass, Albany, uh, it's like every time New York, there's, anytime there's Long like... Island – like any anything on the East Coast, that's when I first really started to see like just dudes just not giving a shit and and yeah. seriously hurting people, um, which I'm laughing about. But uh, yeah, like I it, it, our first Long Island show, a dude picked up. It, it was at some weird club that had like a Sahara theme or something like that, and this dude just picked up this giant palm tree in the thing and just started smashing people with it. That was pretty. That was pretty wild. I just don't understand the <laughs> point behind that. I mean, I get it. I mean, the the shock and awe value, and I, you know, like, I, he's got he's got stories though, right? You know what I mean? Like he's going to tell that story for the rest of his life. That's so cool. So I'm glad he's got that. <laughs> but you yeah. know, like there's like this weird, this weird thing where like there used to be, and I am sorry if I've said this a million times on this podcast already, but I remember there used to be like the times when those bands from the New England area. Uh, would come down you know a lot of them were signed to eulogy and they would play like with evergreen terrace who was also signed to eulogy and they're from here it's so, like on broken wings and shattered realm and bury your dead and all these other bands like i liked all those bands right yeah but then like their fan base would like their bros would travel down with them 
And yeah, then, it, then it would be like a bunch of unknowing participants in a fucking, you know, massacre in the mosh pit. when we were like, what the fuck is going on? And so, like, <clears throat> I grew up not liking crowd killing because it was just not in my area unless these bands come. Right, yeah. But now it's, like, so prevalent. It's, like... I feel like it's the norm. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's but so weird. It's, uh, I, I don't know, man. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. I, 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 hate, I hate that we've entered, uh, yeah. you know, mosh uh, discourse, which is uh, very <laughs> difficult to say. But, I, you know, do whatever you want. As long as the show doesn't get shut down and, and no one's getting seriously hurt and people are taking care of each other at the end of the day, like, do whatever yeah. you got to do. If you're trying to oh. take out, like, your fucking personal issues on me, that's something yeah. different. Like, I don't care. Like, And I'm always the guy that's kind of around that area of the pit because – that just feels yeah. like the show to me. So I, I know that I'm putting myself in harm's way when I'm there. So I know if I get hit, that's all, that's on me and I, whatever. But it's the targeting stuff that I don't understand. The whole, like, yeah. that is, like, a different Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's stupid. Uh, but, you know, if you're, you're going hard and you're having fun, like, you're not targeting, like, a, you know, if you're not being an asshole, yeah. that's one thing. But, I don't know, I'm almost 40, so moshing isn't really in my I'm not doing it <laughs> no no I'm not doing it and I've seen no. so many people like get hurt by moshing I mean I know we're talking about it now but this morning I think uh, there was someone who was killed in a mosh pit last night Jesus or over the weekend yeah so um, be careful out there yeah and if you're, you're old just don't yeah don't do that well we'll do it at Furnace Fest for it dies today, I want to. I want to. Yeah. I want to have a good show. <laughs> Do it first. For it dies today, just go crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's like let's 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 get out of this mosh content. We'll get back. We'll, we'll get into <laughs> some furnace fest stuff. And we'll end it on that uh, because you know that's that's coming up soon. Um, what what kind of uh, what kind of uh, set list we looking we looking for forward to at um, furnace? That, that's a good question. Is this one uh, is this one that you like tease some new stuff or are you going strictly nostalgia for the oldies? No, I think we're going to play a couple new songs. So, uh, I think we're going to have around 30 to 35 to 40 minutes to play. Cool. I believe we're playing. I, and I might not be able to say this yet. I don't know where we're playing. I have a good idea. Um, because they haven't set any lineups or, or told us anything. Yeah, they've about only that said yet. the day line. Oh, they've only said who's playing yeah. which day. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, um, I think we're going to do this. Like, a lot of songs off Cave of Choir. We're going to do. Uh, we're gonna do, I think, two off of Sirens, and then I, th- I think the hope or the plan right now is to play two newer songs. What those are, I don't know yet. So we've got three to pick from, <laughs> so it's not gonna be too easy, the, or it's not gonna be too best. difficult. Rather, the two we know yeah. best. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll play a couple of new songs and see how they go. We've been playing them uh, <laughs> in our snuff film uh, uh, location. You know, uh, yeah, snuff film location, and uh, they sound really good so far so um really happy with how those That's are good up. are they similar to material on the kate of choir and sirens or is it like a departure from your older stuff because you've grown as a well you haven't grown that much because you wrote them years and years ago um it's i would say it's probably pretty similar like the the one song we have is yeah i, I think they're all pretty similar i just think we've kind of refined what we want to bring into it instead of just piecing together random parts and stuff but um the one we finished the other day is just it it's just really heavy um that one i'm excited about so uh that definitely doesn't sound like anything we've done um uh, but it's it's i don't know i don't know how to describe it but it, it's it's a really heavy song it's got i think a we call it for the for the chorus so <laughs> we've never done that i don't think so it's pretty cool i think we call those in the industry a banger We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see if the ki- the kids are the kids you know, call it a banger. Grown adults uh, enjoy it. So. Yeah. Well, I'm very looking forward to uh, seeing you guys in Alabama. Um, I'm I tr- I'm trying and I've been trying to think back on if I've if I ever got to catch you guys live back in the day, and I'm not a hundred percent sure that I can say with certainty that I did. I don't know. But I will in September of this year. So. Well, there you go. You'll be there. It'll be all worth it, and the wait will be worth it. Um, cool. Well, Nick, I appreciate it. I appreciate the time. Uh, I know you're a busy man these days with family and you know trying to get your band back together and 
on the road, on the road, not back together, but you know, trying to get them all in line and back to, uh, or not back to, but to Furnace Fest. So we look forward to, um, yeah, the the new stuff, the seeing you guys in Alabama. That's going to be a great time. And uh, if you need anything, obviously you, I know you were in contact with Alex. We've been in contact, so you still have a direct line to the old Lamb Goat headquarters. There we go. Love it. Cool. No, I appreciate I appreciate it, man. Thanks for uh, for having me on. I know it took a while, and uh, appreciate you being flexible with my schedule. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you down uh, down in uh, Bama. Yeah, it'll be a great time. And again, yeah, no problem. Uh, obviously, it's taken some time to get this together, but hey, I hope good. it lived up to the hype, man. Yeah, you know, I, I you know, it, it was it was far easier than uh, a lot of my other podcasts have been. So that's always a good. Um, you know, I don't like to have them drag or me have to like really like hold most of the conversation. You're a conversationalist guy, Nick. So Gosh. it was it was easy to let you drive. You know. Now the only thing I'll say is I can't wait for the comments. Yeah. Like I am living. Well, we'll for get, the they'll, they'll come, dude. Don't worry, dude. Oh, I know they will, <laughs> and I feel like that. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they 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 will. I can't wait. So shout out Lamb Goat Message Board. Love you guys. Yeah. Oh man, I wish we would have gotten to it's that. It's not a message board anymore. It's, no, it is. Uh, it is the, com- we, the we comment section. We've got a message board. The and comment I, section. Yeah. I really do. I I forgot you brought the fucking message board thing up, but I remember like you know like that's such an intricate part. Not only a lamb goat, but I think a message boards and the discussion within the comments on those early websites were such an intricate part of like this little music scene that we were a part of, and um, unfortunately, that's... I think that's lost on the current oh, current yeah. day. But it's just it's way different. And I remember like literally there were boards that like we were all part of that, you know, that's that's how we got places to stay. That's how we booked yeah, yeah, tours. Yeah. That's how we designed our merch. And uh shout out in strife back in the day. <laughs> uh Buffalo shows back in the day. Yeah, there was like but, that the uh, B nine board, the uh PA B9 hardcore. board, yeah. PA hardcore was another board. Uh Lamb Goat obviously had a board. Yeah. But I mean like even like our lo- my local community had like a really shitty fucking like forum you know what i mean yes, we would always so go we. on, we'd go on there and talk <laughs> shit about each other and it was a crazy time so like yeah so that's kind of all know, i want to talk about on bring, the comments part <laughs> yeah bring back the message boards you know yeah yeah come on over <laughs> to uh, lamgo.com slash forum and try it out i'm sure you'll <laughs> love it that'll that'll go very yeah. poorly <laughs> so oh, yeah for somebody <laughs> yeah all right well nick Thank you again for coming on. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks, man. All right, brother. Thank you. Take care. Take it easy.